Hello, my name is Gemma and I work at Mr Boo's. You've probably seen me doing some of the kids' story times, but today it is adult Gemma uh, and I'm talking about my favourite books. All of these books will be available um, down in the description below from our online shop. Um, you can order any of them, any amount of them, and we're doing half price postage and packaging at the moment. So, uh, a forewarning about these books, um, I've just had a look at my shelf and I realised that a lot of them are very light and fluffy, apart from one of them, which is quite horrifying. I don't know what that says about me, but just as a forewarning to you, but let's go through them. Okay, so the first one is I Was Born For This by Alice Oseman. I actually have two of her books on my shelf because I love everything she writes. It's a dual narrative. Um, one of the narratives is from a girl named Angel, who is a massive fan of this pop band called The Ark. And the other narrative is from the perspective of Jimmy, who is the main singer in The Ark. And it's about a chance meeting between these two people and their lives. Um, and I think with a lot of YA fiction, you'll think that, oh, this chance meeting is going to be a romantic one, or maybe there's going to be a romantic relationship, but there isn't. Uh, it's about this really weird, unexpected friendship that happens between the two of them, the, this camaraderie, um, which is something that really like goes away from the typical kind of YA tropes and is why I really love it. Um, it's essentially though a book about friendship, it's about a uh, fandom, it's about the way that we kind of idolise and in some ways dehumanise celebrities through like our internet culture and the way that their lives are actually led and how they actually feel about things. Um, so if you're interested and in any way shape or form about fandom about kind of online politics or like social groups this is a book for you. The second book is Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. You may have heard Noelle Stevenson's name because she is the writer for She-Ra, um, which is a very popular series on Netflix at the moment, but this is like her original, her original piece of work which got her kind of known about. Um, it was originally a webcomic, um, but it's essentially about Nimona. Uh, who is a shapeshifter and her one goal in life is to be the world's best evil villain sidekick. Um, the only problem is is that uh, she is so much better than any evil villain she gets sidekicked with. In this world which is a mixture of um, kind of robots but also like knights and dragons and things like that, there is a person who is assigned to be the good guy and a person who's assigned to be the bad guy. And the bad guy in this doesn't mind being the bad guy because he knows whatever evil plans he concocts the good guy is always going to scupper them and so there's always going to be this balance so no bad is ever going to actually happen but Nimona comes along and she's kind of like well why would you why would you let them do that when we could just be better than them so you have this really odd situation where all the goodies are trying to hunt down and kill Nimona and the bad guy uh, is the one running after her like her surrogate dad telling her to stop and to no please don't do that put put it down Nimona put it down it's hilarious uh, it's obvious that the two of uh, the goodie and the baddie had both had a relationship in the past which has turned very sour that's part of the reason why they hate each other it has so much heart in it and Nimona has a habit of shape-shifting into a shark uh, but just her head and then she leaves her tits so she's just like a shark walking around with tits so that's fun it's a good book if you want a laugh in times like these i could not recommend this more it's also a graphic novel so if you like graphic novels this is for you the other book uh, that i have on my shelf by alice oseman because it seemed to be just a stand for Alice Oseman is Heartstopper. Um, this is another graphic novel and it basically centres around the relationship between these two boys at school um, who yeah get together and it's about the story of them coming out, the story of them getting in this relationship, uh, the reaction to it and their lives and their friends in general. It is so sweet, it's like tooth achingly sweet but it's also really honest and respectful and is a really true depiction of what it's like coming out, especially at a young age. Um, and it really touched me. It really did. It's just beautiful. I'm doing this in a weird order, but we're just going to have to deal with it. Okay, so uh, another really, really cute uh, book. A little bit more dark this one, but this is The Watchmaker of Filigree Street by Natasha Pulley. Oh my god, this book is just so good. So the story starts um, with this character called Thaniel, um, and it's set in a world which is like London in the Victorian era, but not quite like our London in the Victorian era. This world is very steampunky, if you know what that means, so it's very mechanical. There's advances in technology which aren't present in our world, so it has a little bit of a fantasy element to it, but it's very much grounded in reality. 
But Thaniel works as a typist for the government. He comes home one day and he finds that someone has put a golden stopwatch on his bed. Um, and he can't open it, but he can hear that it's ticking. So he ends up carrying it around with him for like six months because he just can't let go of it. He knows it wasn't given to him by his mum or his sister or anything like that. So he doesn't know where it's come from. And he's in the pub one day with all of his friends and suddenly the watch opens and starts ringing really loudly and kind of in a like half of embarrassment he runs out the pub and just as he runs out the pub a bomb goes off in the pub killing loads of people so the story kind of starts with this question of um who put the watch on his bed um how did they know that this bomb was going to go off and as he opens up the watch now that it finally will open now that it started ringing he sees on the inside it's got a note saying made by uh, the watchmaker of filigree street so who is the watchmaker of filigree street it's a retelling of sherlock holmes it's got ancient japan in it and a clockwork octopus named katsu which is kind of sentient that likes stealing people's socks it's it's just fantastic it's brilliant um and it's a little bit of a romance as well it's just it's amazing you need to read it speaking of octopuses um, this is my non-fiction book, which everyone seems to just have a non-fiction book on their shelf. Um, the Soul of an Octopus by Cy Montgomery. I love nature, um, and I never thought I would be interested in reading an entire book about octopuses. And yet I read this entire thing in like a day. This book is about a woman's journey in trying to create um, a relationship and a friendship with an octopus. Obviously, as some of you may know, octopuses we don't really understand scientifically. Um, they are so different from us and yet they are so intelligent and we're not quite sure how far their intelligence goes or how they really think. But this book is about essentially animal intelligence and not just animal intelligence of octopuses but of all animals and especially fish and other marine animals that I think we kind of give a, a pass to when we think about intelligence in animals. There's a really amazing um, bit in the book where she is wandering around the aquarium at night um, and she's with the keeper of the electric eels and then the tank of the electric eels they have a light that goes off every time the electric eel like sets out a volt of um, electricity and it's in the middle of the night and this light keeps flickering and she asks the keeper oh, why is the why is the light going off they're not hunting anything and he says no 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 they're not they're not hunting anything they're dreaming and in their dreams they're hunting and that's why the light's going off so if an eel if an electric eel can dream, what else can they do? It's a really weird sentence. If electric eels can dream. Sounds like a really cool band name, isn't it? Okay, and my last book, which I warned you, is the really dark. Ah, my books are all falling. My last book, which, as I warned you, is the dark and gritty one. So if you like that, you'll love this. This is Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. Oh boy. Okay, I'm not going to tell you very much about this because I think this book is best when you go in blind um but i will say that the book starts um uh, with a woman she's driving through the highlands of scotland alone in her car and we know because we read the book from her perspective that she is looking to pick up hitchhikers and these hitchhikers have to be male they have to be well built and they have to be alone they cannot be missed and we know from kind of external sources that every time she picks up one of these hitchhikers, they disappear. It's incredibly gritty. It sent me into a bit of an existential crisis uh, when I read it for a few weeks. Um, it is quite tough to read, but it's also incredible and is really a book about examining us as people and as humans and why we do and justify the things that we do. It's incredible. It's it's just incredible. Um, also, my mum really enjoyed it really weirdly. So there we are, maybe your mum will enjoy it too. So there we are guys, those were my books. As I said earlier, all of them are available down in the description below from our website. Um, we are doing half price postage and packaging at the moment. So if you wanna get some new reads and any of these sound good, hit us up. Thank you so much, see you later.